It's another awesome Friday. Welcome to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, she is a distinguished biological scientist with over 100 publications to her credit. She is the Foundation Vice Chancellor of the University of Energy and Natural Resources, Professor Esiewa. I'm excited to see you. How have you been? Thank you very much. For now, I am on retirement, but I am on contract, okay. uh, working at the Department of Civil Engineering at uh, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Usually women don't like science, you know that. But, I mean, you have shown distinction in this area. How did you do it? Well, I think it started when I was growing up. Uh, I lived with my grandparents at Akimoda. And I always looked at the skies and wondered what a universe in which we are. And so I wanted to know more about nature. Mm. And I used to go to the library and, and learn a lot. Okay. So I have been a good student in the primary school, Anglican primary school. So when I passed the common entrance and I went to Akimoda Secondary School, I decided to do science. Okay. So I did uh, physics, chemistry, and biology. In actual fact, I was also doing additional mathematics. But then I was the only girl doing it. Mm -hmm. And I had a bad experience uh, <laughs> with my male colleagues. I topped the class. Oh, my and so uh, one of them brought a, a branch of cassia to hit my head with a group of the boys. That why should I top the class? I should be very careful. Oh. So being the only girl doing art maths, I stopped. Oh, my yes, goodness. I would have done a straight engineering. Okay. So I did physics, chemistry, biology, and then uh, I joined the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. I actually had admission to Legon and UCC. Those days, they were the only three universities. Definitely. But I chose Kwame Nkrumah University for a reason, because I saw that it was a beautiful place to study. It had all the professions architects, pharmacists, everybody is here. So even if you want to marry, uh, you will find somebody, uh, a prof somebody, a professional uh, to marry. So uh, KNWC, I like, also like the environment. Okay, so, so you came here. Yeah, so we'll I came here. We'll talk more about KNUST, mm. but you, uh, your, your mother is from Makimoda, right? My mother is a Fanti. Okay, so from Gomua. From Gomua, they go. And my father from is from Oda. Oda. But so, we had lived there. My grandfather moved from Gomuadego okay. to Akimoda. Uh, he gave the date as 1919. Okay. So that's where my mother was born. All of us were born. In Akimoda. Yes, oh, in wow. Akimoda. So I, I suspect that you grew up there. Yes, yeah, that's where I grew up. How was growing up like in Akimoda? Uh, growing up was really uh, enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed my stay at Oda mm. because I also love nature. Okay. So our house was surrounded by a big forest. Mm. And then uh, I used to go to the farm, cross the river, and then we'll go and, and fetch uh, firewood, come home. And then my grandparents, uh, my grandmother was a fishmonger. Mm -hmm. So I also helped her uh, sell her fish. And there was the railway line passing through Oda. Yeah. So going to school, I didn't have a watch. The train was my watch. The first train that passes by comes at uh, 7.30. So I have to do my work as quickly as possible mm -hmm. so that as soon as I hear the sound, it is uh, 7.30. I should be on my way to school. Okay. And I had very good friends as well. Okay. And I also love God. Mm -hmm. So. There were so many churches. I went to almost every church. Okay. I went to Mozambique Disco Christo Church, all because I love to sing. Okay. So when they are singing, I'll be there. Uh, I went to um, Apostolic. Now the Church of Pentecost, they were also near us. So anytime I hear a, a song being sung, I, I rush there. Okay. And I used to be an Anglican. I was baptized and confirmed as an Anglican. Okay. But in addition to Anglican choir, I will go to the Methodist wow. Square as well. Mm -hmm. You name it, everywhere I hear people sing it. Even Aladura. <laughs> Aladura was somewhere. I will just go and then be part. I know so many songs. <laughs> so I know a lot about uh, different churches. 
uh -huh. all because I love to sing. You love to sing. Yeah. My, my grandparents were very nice to me. You know, grandparents, they pamper uh, children. Their children. Grandchildren. Yes. But I would say I, I didn't really have many challenges. I was one of the few girls among my cousins. We lived in a, a big uh, family house. My aunts, children, everybody was there. Mm. And I loved to uh, move along with the boys. Okay. And I even wanted to uh, ride a bike. Oh. But I could climb trees too. I would climb. <laughs> oh, I was, because they were boys. Wherever they go, I you tried to, yes, them. like okay. coconut. Okay. These days I can't climb. But I know how to, yes, to. to climb the coconut tree and the mango tree. I will climb and go and stay somewhere in the middle. Oh, yes. doing what? I would like to see what is happening. <laughs> and it was just an adventure. If yes. you live with nature, yeah. you'll be so happy. Yeah. You will be looking at uh, many other things. Exactly. And for me, it was a great joy. Mm -hmm. You know, I will wake up very early and then take the fish to the market. Okay. The fish, fish which my aunt have smoked. Yep. I'll take it to the market, come back quickly and have my bath and go to school. Maybe it's the music. I always felt in my heart mm -hmm. uh, a time of gratitude mm -hmm. to God every day, wow. every day of my life. Wow. And, and even at that age, as young as I was, I was composing songs. Oh, wow. Yes. Why were you staying with your grandparents? Why? I you, was, you are the eldest yes, of your parents' children. I was the eldest, but children. I was born when my mother was a teenager. My okay. father too was a teenager. <laughs> so they were not... Uh, Ready at, to yes. So they didn't have the time. So my grandparents had to take care of me. Okay. And my father too had to travel abroad mm -hmm. and do his, his BSc. Okay. So that is why I stayed with them. Your grandparents. These, uh, old, yes, these you, old... Do you ever regret staying with your grandparents? No, because I... Listen to the advice. But My you grandpa, miss your parents sometimes. I, I don't think so. Because... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't miss no, them. <laughs> because I was just very young. when uh, And I saw myself with my grandparents. Okay. So they were my parents. Okay, at that time. Yes, at that's that time. That's what you knew. As that's what I knew. Child, it was later on that uh, my mother traveled outside. And then she will be bringing me things from abroad. And even when she was in Akka, she was bringing me clothes. They said it's from your mother. And then my father, I really wasn't bothered. As to, <laughs> once I was happy, I, I, I tell you that musicians can be something. <laughs> I always had joy in my heart. Yeah. So I love my grandparents. Uh, my grandmother would uh, bring me uh, an old hymn book, fancy hymn book, and then I'll be singing. Mm -hmm. To her. I mean, if somebody loves to hear you sing, and you also love to you sing. Love so we, we, we had a bond. Okay. So when he, she passed away, I knew that my, he was, she was my mother. Uh -huh. Yes, even though my mother too played a major role in my life concerning my secondary education. Mm -hmm. Because without her, I would never have been to secondary school. Wow. Yes, because my, my grandfather thought that I should go to typing school. Those days, there was a commercial <laughs> school. So we said, oh. And I was and doing... Yes, secretary. And I was doing most of the housework. So my aunts were saying, if I go, we'll be doing all the housework. <laughs> so the commercial school was nearby. So as they see me every day, I'll do my work and still go to school. They thought that, oh, if I stay, uh, I go to commercial school, uh, I will still do well. Okay. And help the, with it. The, then my mother said, no way. This, my daughter, must go to a secondary school. Okay. And she said she will do everything she can. And she did it. And so I went to a secondary school on a full scholarship wow. uh, by the grace of God. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm happy to hear this. But you talked about Akimoda Secondary School. Yes. At what point were you at Ebri Girls? No, what they happened? Also had yes. Been. You see, I... I wanted to go to Ebri Girls, okay. but my grandfather is my greatest advisor. He said, there is a hill, and if I go there, the car can come back <laughs> from the hill. So I should just stay close by. Okay. So uh, when I completed the O level, you know, because of my experience with the boys, I said, I have to go back to Ebri. Okay. And Ebri, because 
there was a very nice lady, uh, Molly Ejaku Mensa. He was one of the daughters of a Presby minister. Okay. And I saw in her uh, as a role model, she was very neat, quiet. And I said, the Brie girls, I must go. Mm -hmm. And my father, I had seen my father. So my father, I told my father and his friend, uh, was married to the headmistress, Joyce Sibi. Okay. Mr. Sibi. So, oh, he told uh, Mr. Sibi, and uh, I was admitted okay. uh, to a Briggles, and I was so happy. The to school I safe. wanted to go, really and the car happy. never went back. <laughs> um, <laughs> like your grandfather. Yes, said. my grandmother said that if I sit in the car, go in there, the car will, will move back. <laughs> it never did. Until so I completed. As a three girls, what, what you read science again? In yes, I did because I had done physics, chemistry, biology, mm -hmm. and I did the same mm -hmm. uh, when I went to Ebrey Girls. Ebrey girls. Yes. So what kind of a student were you in Ebrey Girls? In Ebrey Girls, I was like a, an advisor to the. I I saw my because maybe from my grandparents. In three, they will say in Yeah. If they have problems, they will come to me, okay. and then I will advise them. Okay. So they used to call me Ma Ogi. Okay. Augustina was my Christian name. Okay. I, I changed it when I married uh, my husband okay. in the U.S. Okay. So I was a science student, well behaved and very religious. So I was a sacristan. Sacristan okay. was a chapel prefect. Okay. So I will supervise the first uh, years to clean the, ch the church mm -hmm. or the chapel mm -hmm. and it was a great delight mm -hmm. also uh, they always have quiet time mm -hmm. every day yeah. and I saw the place as a place for me okay. every day we we'll read the bible everybody has a time like mm -hmm. that and so that is how I found myself and at Ebritu I was in charge of the children's choir we have the uh, youth choir mm -hmm. the, we have the junior choir and I was in charge there too, I composed a song uh, <laughs> for, for them, uh, and and many yeah. of the Brie girls. If I sing it now, they they don't know that I composed it. They don't know. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the song is Christ is coming again, mm -hmm. and it's it's very interesting. When you get to a certain stage, they were so happy. Okay. Oh, I shall sing Hallelujah. Oh, oh, Hallelujah. Uh, How would you describe the environment, the Brie girls environment? The Brie girls was very beautiful, calm, and of course, I was in the midst of a female. Okay. And you, you used to be with boys. Now yes, you now, yes. Yourself with all girls. Yes. Were you feeling uncomfortable? Not at all. I was really happy uh, to be in the midst of all girls, girls. <laughs> that uh, we share uh, stories and enjoy the company of each other. Okay. And I, I saw that a lot of them were from rich homes, unlike the uh, previous <laughs> place where I was. So I was surprised to see. Oh, that the big. Yes, big cars, hey, daughters of judges and doctors coming to visit their wards, unlike the other place. Mm -hmm. uh, you see um, people in ordinary, occasionally there will be some car coming. Uh, coming. <laughs> but this one, every Saturday, you see it was, big cars. yes, big cars. And uh, I, I had the opportunity to of having my uncle okay. visiting me. My uncle was the then director of operations, Gihok. Okay. So he, he also, also had a big yeah, car. he had a Mercedes Benz. So, so he felt good. Yes, I really felt good. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my aunt too was then the director of nursing services. So okay. she also she would come and visit me, and then they they brought me nice things. Okay. So. All the people, I mean, my friends, they, they thought that I come up from a very rich home. <laughs> they don't know that I sit with a fish monger at a kimono. <laughs> and that is where <laughs> my background <laughs> has been. So some, some of the things they brought, uh, I couldn't eat them. Some cheese and some biscuits. I'm not used to uh, European food. Yeah. I'm used to etzo and... Uh, Ibanaviruba and all that kind of things. <laughs> so, but every day they are eating this. And so they, they were surprised that I have all this and I can't eat. So I will give it to them. I said, oh, please, uh, my aunt has brought me this, but I don't like them. Can you come for them? <laughs>
and they took it oh, with yes. joy. They took it with joy. <laughs> But they still see me as somebody from a very rich family. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you had challenges with water. We had challenges with water. But I, I, I'm used to carrying water. Mm -hmm. So for me... For, from a long distance. Yes. I used to go and fetch water in order. So every was even shorter. It didn't affect me. No, it didn't affect way. me because I've been brought up in a, in a place where... You have to carry water. Sometimes you go very far to a, a river in you know, order. It's a stream called Bongare. You have to go carry water and bring it. Nice. Later on, we had a pipe bond water. Wake up very early at dawn, sometimes 1 a.m., mm. and then fetch water okay. for the whole house. Mm -hmm. So fetching water for myself uh, was not a, a problem. So from the Brie Girls to the University of yes. Science and Technology, yes. you say you had opportunity to go to Cape Coast, to yes. other universities, mm -hmm. but you chose KMUC. Yes. Yes. I'm sure that's where you really firmed up your wish to become a scientist. Mm. Yes. Mm. At KNUST, we were not many. Uh, there were a few of us. And I will say my class, we were only 15. Okay. And we knew the teachers. And my, my department, I started as a biological scientist. Mm -hmm. So uh, Africa Hall, where I used to live, mm. was just a, a one and a half minutes walk okay. to the department. Mm. So I will always walk to the place. And discipline was high. And if you don't come to class, everybody will see that you didn't come to class. We are not many. Yeah. So KNUST at that time, with this low population, the resources were in abundance. Okay. No problem with water. Mm. No problem with anything. Okay. No problem with food. Mm. We were given food three times a day. Wow. It was later on that the government decided to give us a allowance for the food. Mm. 21 cities a week. So <laughs> you make your own food. Okay. Now everything has been cancelled. They, they are not as fortunate <laughs> as we are. So, and then even in the rooms, mm. first year I was paired uh, my mate, George Saki. Okay. Second year I, w I was in a single room, third year in a single room, final year in a single room, and then all by myself. Seated. Yes. Ah. Mm. Mm. I see. So, who were your, uh, your lecturers and how did they impact on your learning process? Our lecturers, I, once again, we were not many, so they knew us by name. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of the lecturers, I mean, the way they teach, you can actually remember anything. Uh, I mean, those days, I, I was uh, AJ Minsa, we, we call him AJ Minsa, mm -hmm. he's one of our lecturers. He would teach uh, as if he has memorized everything. Mm -hmm. Then he, he taught us botany. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was uh, one of our lecturers also, uh, Mr. Nyakun. Many of our lecturers had masters, and he was very small, and he had a small car, mm -hmm. and he had a small voice, and he was teaching <laughs> microbiology. So we would say, a micro man with a micro car and a micro voice, and teaching microbiology. When you were a student, you, oh, we even gave some of the lecturers names, but one of them was teaching us genetic, uh, genetics. And he couldn't pronounce some word well. We used to call him Chinchilla. <laughs> oh, oh, it's Chinchilla coming. Please. But they taught us very well. Okay. So you, you won't forget. Mm. I mean, the things they teach you. And see, those days, there was nothing like internet. If you don't go to lectures, you have to go and copy somebody else's oh, notes. So you can't afford to stay away from class. Mm -hmm. Which hall were you? I was in Africa Hall. Okay, how was it like? Today we know of Katanga Hall and other halls, and we say they are stubborn halls. No, Af African Hall. How African was it like? Hall was, was good. I mean, it was all for girls. Mm. And then we used to close the gates, so mm. you cannot go and stay outside longer. Okay. I was also the president of the Christian Fellowship okay. for Africa Hall. Mm. Right in first year, when I came, I organized the, the Christian Fellowship. And I used to have a morning prayers. We had a chapel. All the halls had chapels. So that is where we were meeting. And then I, I was also the soprano leader for the university choir. Okay. So 
you schooled in KNUSC. Yes. And that was actually where your academic career yes. really began. Yes. From the engineering department as a senior lecturer. Tell me about it. You see, when I completed my biological sciences degree, I majored in microbiology. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Professor Wright, he was the head of civil engineering department and he was developing the KBI pillar tree. Okay. And he needed somebody to look at the way human pathogens in human feces are removed if he, he uses it in, in the design. So we'll go to villages and collect uh, uh, feces from uh, pit latrines. Okay. And then I will look at the pathogens that are present. Mm. And then I'll also I assisted uh, the lab. We had an environmental quality engineering lab, which is a sanitary engineering lab. And we look at water quality parameters, wastewater. So I became part of the department in that regard. Okay. And I had just finished my national service. And immediately after that, the United Nations declared 1980, 1990 as the sanitation decade for the world to improve on water supply mm -hmm. and sanitation. Okay. So I got a scholarship to go to the United States okay. uh, as part of the capacity building mm. uh, for that uh, uh, decade. So I went to the College of Environmental Science and Forestry in Syracuse. And there I looked at pathogen removal mm. and in, in sewage sludge. Okay. And then uh, the Ministry of Health mm. also wanted to upgrade the skills of environmental health officers, those we call Tankansi, mm -hmm. because they only had a, a certificate after all levels. Mm -hmm. So the department wrote to me that I should quickly come and assist in doing, in, yes, in, in, in doing that. So I came back. So from my master's straight to the Department of Civil Engineering uh, to teach uh, microbiology, water quality parameters, hygiene, and pollution control. Mm -hmm. And then the United Nations and uh, the, the WHO also realized that some of the problems we are having with water development projects are caused by engineers. Mm -hmm. When they are constructing roads, they put uh, rocks in, in streams. Yeah. And these flows increases the breeding of the black simulium fly, Uncle Secasis, mm -hmm. which causes blindness. Mm -hmm. And then when they are making dams for hydroelectricity, they create uh, places for snails to increase uh, schistosomiasis mm -hmm. transmission. Mm -hmm. So uh, they said that all engineers must know about the environment. Okay. So I was contacted and I developed uh, a, a course uh, called Environmental Studies. Mm -hmm. And all the engineering students were supposed to do that. So I've been doing this for a long time. And then I was also teaching uh, wastewater treatment. Now that I have my master's, I was teaching at the undergraduate level. Okay. And then in a university, if you want to move up, you have to go and do your PhD. Definitely. So my PhD was on wastewater treatment, okay. which is a key component of sanitary engineering. Mm. Mm. And so I, I went to Holland. Uh, where I, I studied at, uh, they had a UNESCO IHE okay. Institute of Infrastructure and Hydraulics Engineering. Mm. And that's where I did my uh, PhD. And my main reason was to look at how pathogens are removed from wastewater treatment systems to enhance uh, the design and the efficiency mm -hmm. so that when we treat uh, wastewater with human feces, we will destroy all the pathogens mm. before we release them yeah. into the atmosphere. Mm. Mm. As a distinguished academician yes. or academic, you, you've worked on a number of projects. Mm. You talk about water, uh, water supply, sanitation, mm. waste treatment, hygiene, environmental risk assessment. Share with us some of your findings. Well, you know that as a microbiologist, Moving into engineering, I had to look at the role that somebody with such a discipline can help. And my concern was on pathogens. So I had to uh, do research 
on the pathogen load mm -hmm. we have. Okay. So I look at the pathogen load of wastewater here at KNUST, mm -hmm. all the wastewater that, are, that were coming from the halls, mm -hmm. and also Asafo. Okay. So all these things have been published. Mm -hmm. And to look at the flow rates of the wastewater which we are discharging into the environment. Mm -hmm. And then also I evaluated the performance of some of the wastewater treatment plants we have. Okay. And all these things have been published mm -hmm. because I have to provide the basis. In fact, when I traveled, I saw that there is nobody who has been in my area and is moving into uh, engineering like that. Mm -hmm. And so I have to provide a lot of foundation okay. uh, research works. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, I have looked at uh, FICA sludge uh, management. So uh, I developed a comprehensive FICA sludge management plan for the country uh, in collaboration with NDPC through uh, Copenhagen consensus. Mm. It's a big thing that uh, I developed with a team. Okay. Uh, my, my PhD students were involved. And uh, I'm happy to say that even Zoom Lion has started doing it, uh, trying to ensure that our FICA sludge mm. is well treated. Okay. Uh, and then uh, that is not the only thing. I also looked at the impact of our septic tanks, mm. you know, uh, on the groundwater okay. because now we don't have water and everybody is uh, looking at a uh, borehole mm. on their site. Okay. So all these things have effect. I have looked at uh, diarrhea diseases uh, among children uh, with low water quality. Okay. So these are my research areas mm. looking at the water quality we, we drink wastewater management and so all my publications are in that and also hy hygienic practices mm -hmm. among uh, the students and and pollution control mm -hmm. i've also looked at plastic waste and uh, many years ago i think about 20 years ago when my student looked at the way plastics were being introduced we were very much concerned mm -hmm. and predicted that if we continue to do that all the soil mm. we have that uh, will be unproductive okay so i create awareness and you see as a as a, a distinguished academician you have to do research and all this research i incorporate them in my teaching okay. and then you also have to teach yep. so i have taught at uh, ucc mm. pollution control i have taught uh, at uh, university of education winneba mm. And then, of course, uh, at Kwame Nkrumah University, where it is not only in engineering that I, I teach. I have taught, I, I was teaching at the Institute of Mining and Mineral Engineering. And then I was also teaching at Biological Sciences. And then I also helped in the development of programs. Okay. So I was on the committee which developed uh, the program of environmental science mm. uh, at the Department of Biological Science. Do you believe that um, all those um, great professional mm. skills you are exhibiting is dependent on what KNUSC inculcated in you? Oh, yes. I mean, KNUSC is a place to be. Mm. The KNUSC influence I had was when I was working. Okay. When I was working, it gave me a sense of leadership. Okay. It, I was the head of the Center for Environment and Technology. Okay and then the head of department of civil engineering and the dean of the faculty of civil and geomatic engineering. Okay. And by being in those positions, uh, it really helped me. I learned how to work together as a team. Yeah. And I learned that knowledge is not found in one person's head. Definitely. So if you are working, you have to listen to everybody. Yeah. Everybody has a, a role to play. And that was not the only leadership thing. I, I was on several committees. Mm. I was on the whole university disciplinary committee. Wow. So if uh, a staff misbehave, it comes to us. To you. Okay. And then we, we take decisions. Mm. All these things really, really helped me okay. uh, in my dealings with the outside world. Mm. And I was also uh, made a member of several boards. Okay. And what I learned as a leader at KNUSC 
were taken to uh, these balls okay. for efficient running of uh, these balls. Mm. How, how would you access the school? I'm talking about mm. KNUSD from today. How yeah. would you access this today from the time you left? And how, what do you want to see probably in the next five years? KNUSD has changed. I said we used to be 15 in class. No, it's... And the whole faculty was <laughs> less than 400. So uh, now we are in in tens of thousands. Definitely. You need to ensure that you don't compromise excellence. Okay. In the next five years, I'm expecting that the university will keep on increasing. Mm. But we need to strategize how to improve on our teaching and learning uh, procedures. Now, we the COVID taught us how to do uh, distance learning and virtual learning. So yeah, the yeah. university is really embarking on that. And I think that it should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. So as your institution celebrates 70 years anniversary, yes. what message do you have for the institution that really made you who you are? Oh, I will say hooray and congratulations. <laughs> God bless KNUSD <laughs> and make it grow from strength to strength. Professor Esie, who are my guest tonight, remember she is a foundation vice chancellor of the University of Energy and Natural Resources. When I return from this break, she'll be sharing her experiences of venturing into a male-dominated area to become a vice chancellor and leaving a mark. Remember, she also composed the university anthem. She'll be telling me about her passion for music, plus her family values and lifestyle. Stay with me. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest, so Professor Esiwa. So you became the first Vice Chancellor of the University of Energy and Natural Resources. Yes. I mean, to be a Vice Chancellor, usually, I mean, if you look at our terrain, it's being a male-dominated area. How was the journey? Well, hmm, I am very observant, and uh, I always want to see progress in this country. I have to say that I love Ghana very much. Okay. So as soon as I entered the university, I had in mind that I have to reach the top. I have to become a vice chancellor of the university and ensure that we are having excellent programs for the development of the country. That's quite and an ambitious yes. dream. So I was following the steps how to become one. Mm. And then when I became an associate, associate professor, I decided that I have to try and find out what it entails. So I looked at vision statements, uh, mission, and then all the pillars mm. that can make an academic institution an excellent one. Yeah. And therefore, I applied to be the rector of Takrade Polytechnic those days. Okay. But I wasn't taken. That mm. was my first time. Mm. And then the second time, I applied to Kwame Nkrumah University. I was the only female of the uh, eight candidates who applied to be vice chancellors. Wow. See, the, so the thing was in me. And I was seeing how can I have my ideas that I have for education in science and engineering upgraded for the development of this nation. So when uh, President Atamels came into power, he decided to form two universities, one in the Brown region and one in the Volta region. Mm. 
So I organized the first uh, debate, sanitation debate. I hear it's the first in the world okay. for all presidential candidates mm. who have representatives in parliament. So they came here and Dr. Kritina Mwakunyama, he came on behalf of NDC. Mm -hmm. So when NDC decided to do that, she approached me, you know, these committees, sometimes you need women. Yeah. And so I became a member mm -hmm. and I did all the best I could. Mm -hmm. So I became one of the leaders in the uh, Braunhofer University. So we developed all the programs, uh, everything, mission and vision. So for me, we had finished everything. And then I had a call that being a key, I played a key role uh, in the development of the proposal for the Braunhofer region. Mm. I should send my application. Okay. So I took my application and uh, I was taken wow. as the foundation vice chancellor of the university. Mm -hmm. In fact, initially, I didn't want to go. <laughs> I wanted uh, to go to America. My mother was there. Mm. And then one of my sons was living closer to Rajas University. Mm. And so I said I was going to do my sabbatical there mm. and then retire permanently mm. and not come back. <laughs> but I, as a woman of God, I felt that God is calling me to do this work. And if I don't, when I go to America, I will really face challenges. Yeah. And that is why I came. And seeing the hand of God in it, mm -hmm. I did it with all my heart. Okay. I did the best. In fact, I actually even put in 40% of my retirement benefits wow. into the whole program. I had also, one of my projects was one of the best really? EU projects. So they also gave me money. I put in everything. Mm -hmm. Put in all my money. I wanted to see the university that I always wanted a university to be. Wow, you did very well. Yes. And looking at the school now, you you feel fulfilled. I feel so fulfilled. Mm -hmm. If I tell you uh, some of the things that we did and the things that the staff are doing now, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. Okay. And so you composed the university's anthem. Yes. Did your background in music and also um, your exceptional skills in playing the organ <laughs> play a role in this composition? I think that it's a natural gift. I want to tell you that I used to hear uh, angels actually singing to me. Goodness. I have a gospel album. You do? Yes, I have a gospel album. So initially I thought that I was even going to stop teaching. And venture yes, into music. Yes, because, but nowadays, the song do not come that often. Mm. So I, I will hear, and then I will, I will write the music. Okay. I will write it down. Mm. And uh, the, the university was on my heart. Anything that is on my heart turns into a song. Wow. And the university is not the only one uh, whose anthem I compose. Mm -hmm. I did that for you, you has. Mm. Okay. The one in the Volta region yeah. and also the Institution of Engineering, Ghana Institution of Engineering. You did one and also for yes. And also Great. the Organization of Women in Science for the Developing World. Uh, I also have a song for them. Okay. I have so many compositions. I don't even have time to so sit down <laughs> and write. I think that sometimes the song is for me. Okay. Because I'm the only one listening and enjoying it, <laughs> and uh, nobody sees it. You need to yes. share with us. Yes. And uh, thankfully, you have one album. Yes. Maybe you should try and put together another. I hope and so. And another, so that you can share with your public what's in your heart. Yes. <laughs> I hope God will give me that uh, opportunity. But yes. with your rich background in environmental risk assessment, mm. let me ask you this. With all the illegal mining, the water pollution, and what have you, how would you describe us as a country? Have we treated our environment well? We have not. You know, behind the scenes, I was telling you that even trees cry when they are sick. Yes. So if you remove a whole area of trees, and then you go for gold, mm. 
but we don't eat gold. Yeah. You are destroying the environment. In fact, we are really at risk. We have abused the environment for long. And uh, recently I was reading an article about the way plastics has entered our food stream. Mm. So uh, the sperm counts of men have even gone down mm. and it's affecting uh, human fertility and reproduction. So this is a cause for concern. Mm. And I think that we need to protect our environment with all the uh, heavy metals going into uh, the water bodies. Oh, it's, it's very sad. My students are working on it. Currently, one of my students, we are trying to solve the problem. Uh, he, we have developed some filters. We'll be testing them to remove the pollutants we have, arsenic, mercury, mm. uh, manganese, and iron okay. from the water mm. so that it will be safe. But then we should stop polluting it. Mm. And then we have to do that with the stakeholders, everybody involved, uh, so that we find a solution for the people who are doing that. Is Galam say the only way of making an income? Mm -hmm. What are the other ways? And then we build their capacity mm -hmm. to look for alternate source of livelihood, mm -hmm. to protect our environment. Mm -hmm. And then one of my PhD students is looking at the plastic we use in packaging food. So he's going to look at microplastics in the food we eat. Mm -hmm. uh, he has finished with the literature. We are publishing it. So he will look at the one for cocoa, the banku, the one for styrofoam, the soup, and then he will be, will be able to tell the public. What, what have you found? Share she is us. about to start. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. it's about to start mm. that uh, project. Okay, yes. then you will mm. share with yes. us. For you, what's the surest way uh, that we can help protect the environment? You talked about deforestation, which is really bad for us. Illegal mining, which is destroying our water bodies. What can we do to stop some of these activities? Well, like I said, we have to bring every stakeholder on board. For them to see that if we don't stop, in the next 10, 5, uh, 20 years, mm. we'll, we'll really be, be very, very hot. Yeah. In fact, I didn't even mention about the fact that now we don't have enough water to supply the whole of Kumasi. Mm. So everybody is drilling a borehole. Wow. A time will come, the water underground will get finished because mm -hmm. we are not directing the water we have, you see? Uh, we, we don't, have you seen my uh, spouse? Mm -hmm. We just uh, let them move okay. away mm -hmm. and it doesn't soak. People have uh, put concrete the, on their compound, the whole, but here at least we have a place that will get some seepage. Mm -hmm. No shade though, seepage mm -hmm. okay. of the water. <laughs> <laughs> to, to go under, under the ground. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And you see these water tanks you are seeing here, they are recharging. They are not a water tank, so okay. they are recharging my underground water because okay. I have a borehole here. Mm -hmm. And so when I harvest the water from the rooftops, it has to be uh, recharged. And we can become aware of the problem, but we must find a solution together, mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. I'm always scared about the future of our children and our grandchildren about the kind of chemicals that will enter their system. You know, already we are having a lot of kidney problems mm -hmm. and liver. Yeah. It's because of the way we have behaved. And, and plastic is really a big menace. This, and a is, problem. this is something that we'll be looking yeah. out for eventually when you are mm -hmm. out with the research. Yes. But let's talk about your recognition from UNESCO. I know the Ministry of Local Government gave you one, a whole lot of them. When I was given the Order of the Voter Award, mm. I was given uh, my citation included my role in developing uh, engineering environment and sanitation education in Ghana, mm. and also for uh, developing what I call a logo. Mm. 
Apologo is a fuelless uh, generator. It just uses a, just a condenser and magnets. Okay. And then it creates uh, the energy. And then also uh, power from power banks, mm. electricity from power banks. Okay. Uh, I was uh, recognized like that. And, uh, and then I was recognized for my role in a wash. Wash is water, sanitation and hygiene yeah. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. A lifetime, mm -hmm. which is for my whole life, I have been spearheading water and sanitation mm -hmm. in the country. Uh, I have also uh, the, the UNESCO Mondial Logo Award. Mm -hmm. And the Institution of uh, Engineering in Ghana also made me a fellow. Okay. Honoris Corsa. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also a fellow of the African Academy of Science. Mm. And then I was made the African rep for the Organization of Women in Science okay. for the Developing World. Mm. I am also a member of the Africa Sanitation Think Tank okay. and a member of the World Collaborating Council mm. for Water Supply and Sanitation. It's been water all through. Water and sanitation. Water and sanitation. You can never separate the two. They, they always go they together. They always go together. Mm. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you I very much. I must say that we are so proud of you. Thank and you. And I'm sure Professor Iwa is also proud of you. So you said that at the <laughs> KNUST, you, <laughs> you could get everything. Is that where you grabbed Professor Iwa? Oh, that is where I met him. <laughs> but okay. I knew him before. But that is where, if I hadn't, come to care i wouldn't have met him um, but he was like my brother okay. see because the mother was like a mother the to magnet me. was already yes. there so for us we are together as a brother and a sister <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure the kids are also proud of you how many of them and which among them is towing your line hmm, my children i have two boys okay. and i always thank god that he gave me two boys oh. because they are too adventurous. <laughs> the things they are doing, uh, I can't even say it all. Because it's like mother, like uh, the like other son. one. The <laughs> other one, for example, he went to Cornell. He said, I want to go to his father's school. Cornell, he went to Harvard. After Harvard, he went to work with uh, uh, the third largest oil refinery in the world. He went, he came back and he said, he doesn't want to work uh, in uh, America. He wants to work uh, in. Ghana and you okay. so one is a lawyer okay. and one is a mechanical engineer okay who so. has branched into a business and is now doing his PhD mm. in economics oh, wow. at the University of Zurich wow. so you can imagine wow. we never rest mm. I'm so happy to mm. hear this and I'm sure they're also proud of you very as very as their mother mm. Mm. and I must also say that at your age mm. you look very fit yeah. Is that something you do to keep fit? Or you have a particular exercise that you've been doing? Well, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Okay. And then I, I heard you said I should be doing exercise. Yes. Uh, I do exercise every day. Okay. And it is based on uh, the song, so. Okay. So every day when I wake up, I sing uh, Take My Life. But the Take My Life, I will just Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. So, then uh, I will sing the canticle. Okay. We praise thee, O oh God. Okay. We acknowledge. Then I will sing all. Mm -hmm. okay. And then when I finish, I will sing the Magnificat. Okay. Magnificat is my soul that magnifies the Lord. Okay. So that one, I will go down. My no, I'll do this. My okay, soul does magnify the Lord. Okay. And my spirit. And then when I get to glory be to the Father, uh -huh. then I, I go you down. Yes. yes. Okay. And then I'll be praying for myself, my husband, and my children. children. And then when I finish, I will sing the Methodist hymn. Mm -hmm. uh, That's when you will be do doing the, the press up. up. My son thinks that that is not a press up, but. That's how I do it. And I do this every, every day. day. 
Wow. And God bless you. Oh, for it's a pleasure. All that you're doing. It's a pleasure. I need not ask whether you listen to music. I know you love music. Yes. What genre of music do you listen to? Oh, it's all gospel. Gospel. I don't listen to worldly music. Do, do you have a favorite gospel song? Well, well oh, should I say? It's a hymn. Hymns. It's the ones that you it's compose. Hymns. It's hymns. hymns. Okay, I sing at one? least uh, oh about fifty hymns a day. <laughs> but I you must I, have I really, a favorite. My favorite is the King of Love. Okay. My shepherd is, and that is uh, Madadi's hymn seventy six. The King of Love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I never lack if I am his. Is my thank yes. you, thank you so much, so Professor Iti Iwa. I'm truly grateful that you opened up to us. We really appreciate you, thank and you. God bless you for the good work you're doing. Thank you. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. Same time next week, God willing, we'll be bringing you another edition of PM Personality Profile. My beautiful dress was made by Max Legend. Call them or WhatsApp them on 0241410323 or visit their showroom at the exhibition runabout Dansoman. My beautiful hair was styled by Rashmo City. Call them on 055-826-6028 or visit them on the Dakuma Nyameche Road. And my makeup products is supplied by Ultimate Glamour. Call them on 0506012627 or visit them on the Legon campus. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Enjoy.